Good evening. Uh, welcome to the school board meeting for Thursday, June 7th, 2018. Uh, could I please have the attendance? Ms. Ms. Durgan? Ms. Durgan? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Ms. Starr? Here. Mr. Hinton? Here. Mr. Vashon? Here. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Agenda item 4.0, adjustments to the agenda? Yes, there is one adjustment to the agenda. We've added 11.3, which will be the custodians and food service contract for 2018 to 2021. And I have a couple additional things to add to my superintendent's report. Okay. Thank you. Uh, agenda item 5.0, is there any public comment on agenda items? Does anyone wish to speak? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, agenda item 6.0 recognitions. Yes, yeah, so this is a very this, um, this is a very exciting evening. I remember this day very well last year when we had the opportunity to both honor our retirees who have served our school community um, and also promote or bring our continuing contract teachers and our teachers into their continuing contracts. So it feels a bit of like the changing of the guard a little bit. Um, and so we'll start tonight by recognizing our retirees and our principals will join us as we acknowledge um, each member of our community who's retiring this year. And this year's also, um, I think, probably pretty unique in nature in that we have 19 staff members and one student retiring. Um, we're moving on to other things and we have, I believe, 18 teachers entering into their continuing contracts. So it seems really exciting um, to just look at that information side by side. So before we get started with the first um, retiree recognition, I would just like to thank all of you for being here and bringing um, your special people with you. I think that um, when I look at the number of years of service that you have given to our community, it really is pretty remarkable. And to think about um, how education has changed right before some of your eyes, <laughs> literally, um, and even for some of our continuing contract teachers, as they probably have seen a lot of changes in the last few years. So I just wanted to take a moment before your principals say really nice things about you and your directors to say thank you and thank you for being here. And I would just ask that we all give you a hand. So I believe we will start with Allison Marchese as our first presenter. Good evening, everyone. We, it's a busy time of year, so we have some retirees that couldn't be here tonight, so I'll start with their recognition. Uh, Jane Grover has worked here as an ed tech in Scarborough for 10 years, first at Blue Point, then to Wentworth School, and then back now back at Blue Point again in the resource room setting. She graduated from the University of Maine at Orono uh, in elementary education, and she um, is a K-8 certified uh, general education teacher. She, uh, prior to coming to us, was a classroom teacher for 11 years, so she brought a lot of experience with her. In addition, she's a certified handicapped writing instructor. Jane is very skilled as a reading instructor and is known for her read-alouds with students. She is considered an integral member of the Blue Point team. She is calm, flexible, patient, kind, willing to go with the flow as daily plans get adjusted. We thank Jane for all of her contributions and know she will keep herself busy with her horses, gardening, and love of reading. So, thank you, Jane. Sally Wood has worked as an ed tech twice for us in Scarborough, the first time for five years and now most recently for the last 15 years. She graduated from the University of Southern Maine with a bachelor's degree in social work. She um, has spent most of her time with us at the Wentworth School. For many years, Sally was a key member of our social life skills program. This year, she transferred those kids 
excuse me, she transferred those skills to support students in the main, mainstream and resource room setting. She is well respected for handling countless student big reactions with a sense of calmness. She is skilled in implementing positive uh, support plans with students with the utmost fidelity, as well as being patient, kind, and flexible. Thank you to Sally. We wish her time to relax on the lake, swimming, gardening, and working with her granddaughter who shares her love for horses. So to Sally, thank you. Uh, Kathy Waterman has worked as an ed tech in Scarborough for 12 years, and prior to that, another uh, five years uh, for a district. She graduated from the University of Maine uh, in Orono with a degree in business administration. She has been a member of our functional life skills team at the high school and currently at Wentworth in our academic life skills program. She's very skilled working one-on-one -on -one with students, meeting their functional, academic, communication, and social-emotional needs. She is known for her creative ingenuity, for example, using her belt to pull a wheelchair chair up a steep hill. <laughs> Kathy is positive, high energy, and takes initiative. We are glad that her son and daughter are staying with us as they are both ed techs in the district, but wish Kathy much success um, in enjoying her time at the beach, making her sea glass jewelry, dancing, and riding her motorcycle. So Kathy. Ruth Simakaitis has worked for us as a special education teacher for the last 15 years. She started as a long-term sub, was <coughs> in um, a K2 resource room, a K2 behavior room, and now is an academic life skills teacher at the middle school. I was convinced that Ruth would be a perfect fit at the middle school. She was not so sure. She loved the K2 population, but I knew how much she enjoyed teaching, reading, math, writing, social studies, and science. It did not take long before Ruth admitted I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth received her master's degree in special education from the University of Maine at Orono and had 12 years of teaching experience in Maine prior to joining us. <clears throat> Colleagues describe Ruth as supportive, generous, a mentor, someone who teaches from the heart. She enjoys creating activities and projects so that her students can really experience their own learning. I am now trying to convince Ruth to be a sub for us next year. <laughs> Not sure how I'm doing with that, as I know she will be busy enjoying her family house up on the coast, driving her Mini Cooper to Starbucks, cooking in a gourmet kitchen, and continuing to work with her three rescue greyhounds. So thank you, Ruth. Um, so now I, I have two more people to recognize that are here with us in the audience. So uh, Kathleen, do you want to come up? <laughs> Not really, but thank, thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Want to come stand with me? <laughs> so people know who I'm talking All about, right. who I'm bragging about. Kathleen Carroll has been a K2 social worker for us for the last 17 years. Uh, she's been at Blue Point for the last 12 years, and prior to that, she worked four years as, at Spurwick as a clinician. Kathleen received her master's degree in social work from the University of New England. She is a licensed clinical social worker, which is the highest level of licensure for a social worker. Kathleen makes learning about social skills and peer relationships fun through her use of creative games, and she also embraces every school spirit event with great gusto. <laughs> she dresses up and she goes with it. Um, as students' needs have changed, Kathleen has adopted um, and created more learning activities and strategies in the last few years, really focusing on kids worrying, kids' anxiety. Her instructional use of an individual worry box technique has been highly successful in a strategy that she has also <laughs> shared with families. Kathleen plans to continue to travel the world as part of an international folk dance group, but most importantly, plans to spend devoted time to giving back to those in her life that have been there for her over the years. Kathleen, thank you for the care that you have always given our students and finding ways uh, and resources to meet their needs. Congratulations. Uh, she has to come over here. Oh, you have to go and shake your hands. Oh, no. Stand up. <laughs> Thank you very much. I know you can always do those great dances.
now everyone knows what to do. <laughs> um, Sandra. So we're taking a big hit at K2 here. Sandra Brown Casey is also a, a K2 social worker and has been with us for the last 23 years, uh, 17 of them at the Pleasant Hill School. Prior to coming to Scarborough, she worked as a clinician at Jackson Brook Institute in, and has maintained a private practice throughout the years. Sandra received her master's degree in social work from Simmons College and is also a licensed clinical social worker. Sandra is known by students, parents, and staff for being empathic, an advocate, and the type of listener that makes people feel heard. She has been instrumental at Pleasant Hill with the Backpack Program and Project Race. Some of Sandra's proudest accomplishments include helping the children navigate their challenges so that they are happier and more confident. She noted, they have been my teachers as well. Uh, we thank you for the care you have given to the entire Scarborough community. And now you can spend more time at camp, skiing, enjoying your dogs, horseback riding, being a grandmother, and sharing your heart and skills with the Barbara Bush Foundation. Next presentations will be um, presented, or next recognitions will be presented by Ann Lovejoy, mm -hmm. the principal of Eight Corners Primary School. All right, so I'm going to ask Wendy Zaharis to join me. Not nearly as prepared as Alison Marchese with written statements. I like to speak off the cuff, so. <laughs> I've known Wendy Zaharis for the entire time I've been principal at Eight Corners School. She has done so much more than that, though. She's been the, uh, she started working it's in Scarborough schools in 1986 and was here through 1990, and then took a little break and came back to us in 92 and has been here ever since as our uh, library ed tech at Eight Corners. So before that, I was talking to her this morning and learning all kinds of things about the school that during renovation processes and different things that she had an office in a closet, believe it or not, that's hard to believe, I know, offices and closets in Scarborough, who knew even back in 1986, um, and that her library was actually the gym for a while during the renovation period, and so that was, those were some fun things that we talked about, um, about her, her, her longevity here. She's also was a permanent sub for K, for 6 through 12, which was not her preference, but, <laughs> but she got it anyway. <laughs> and a classroom teacher at Pleasant Hill and Eight Corners. Blue, blue point, sorry, so she's been everywhere. <laughs> but um, most importantly, she has given the kids of Eight Corners School the love of learning of books and all the different kinds of things that you can find in a library and do in a library that may or may not have to do with reading. But she um, has guided them and helped them find those books that are just right for them in every way, whether it's just about their interests and, and their own opinions and their own, their own interests in things, whether it's nonfiction or fiction, and the right, the right level for reading for them as well. And to know that libraries have all kinds of things for everybody. So she has made kids love books and love the library, and we are very honored to have her have been with us for so long. So thank you, Wendy. Stay retired this time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Wendy. Thank you very much. And the second person I'd like to honor is Heidi Goslin, who's been a teacher in Scarborough School since 1993. 
Um, she doesn't look a day older than she did in 1993. <laughs> if anybody has seen pictures of her, she really has not changed at all. It's hard to believe she's been here that long. Um, and she has been um, a classroom teacher at Pleasant Hill in Eight Corners, first and second grade, and most recently she was one of the pioneer teachers of all-day kindergarten, all kindergarten and has been there ever since. Um, she has just done so much for the community of Scarborough and kids in general, and I just is, I'm going to get teary talking about her if I talk too much, but she really loves every child that walks into her classroom and makes them feel welcome and special, including the one that started school on Monday. Um, so <laughs> in the last two weeks of her tenure as a teacher, new student, and she said, come on in, let's, let's, start, the, let's start it off right. So she never misses a beat and is always um, the first to volunteer to do and help and garden and even in her high heels and pencil skirts, she's out there digging holes for trees and <laughs> doing it faster and better than anybody else. She has amazing talent. Um, so thank you to Heidi and I'm sorry she couldn't be here. Our next two retirees will be recognized by Barbara Hathorne, principal of Pleasant Hill <coughs> Primary School. Hello, everyone. If you don't mind, I'd like to speak for Todd Jepson um, for a custodian that is retiring from Pleasant Hill. Linda is not here this evening. Uh, Linda Smith began working for the school department as a special ed bus aide in 2002. She then became a part-time custodian in 2005 and has remained as both full-time and recently part-time custodian since May of 2005. During the past 14 years, she has held custodial assignments in every school in the district except for Eight Corners. And I've been lucky to work with her at both Middle School and Pleasant Hill. An interesting fact about Linda's experience is that she was the first eighth grade class in the new Scarborough Junior High, the old Wentworth, in 1962. She was also among the first custodial group to work in the new Wentworth in 2014. Linda has always done quality work in the custodial department and is someone who takes pride in her work, no matter where she is assigned. We thank her for her dedication and years of service to the Scarborough Public Schools. Gail. Gail Raymond, a.k.a. Old Wing. <laughs> Gail began her teaching career 35 years ago. Monique Culbertson hired Gail 15 years ago to establish math support for the primary grades. And I know how much you love Monique and miss her. Gail was trained in math recovery and retained the math support role for nine years. Her role then changed and Gail spent recent years as an academic support teacher at Pleasant Hill, ensuring that her students improve their skills in both mathematics and reading. Gail, Gail. I'm being good. <laughs> Gail uses humor and wit to make people smile and many times make a point. She does not mince words and she tells it like it is. Yep. Gail is hardworking and very thoughtful. She loves her students and she loves her teachers. She made a point to meet me as soon as I walked in the door the first day. I just came to visit and said, you need to know me. <laughs> that happened to me, too. <laughs> she is always willing to lend a helping hand and go the extra mile, and she always does to students and staff. Gail has been dedicated to the students, parents, and staff at Pleasant Hill. We thank her for her dedication and years of service to Scarborough Public Schools. I wish Gail much, uh, much deserved joy and re relaxation with her husband, children, grandchildren at the lake. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> she, she drives three hour 
to every day, and it is a little nerve-wracking when it gets dark for her. All right, Terry Mann, another very hardworking teacher. Terry began her teaching career 22 years ago in California. She began working for the school department 20 years ago as a gifted and talented teacher, and then the past 19 years at Pleasant Hill School as a multi-age and first grade teacher. Terry is a very hard worker, coming to school early in the morning and staying very late in the day, into the evening, into late at night. Many of us think that she actually spends the night and weekends at Pleasant Hill. We think she has a hidden bed somewhere. I'm sure her husband thinks the same. Now she will be able to spend time hiking with her husband and crafting with her friends and taking care of her elderly parents, something we have in common. Terry has been a dedicated and selfless teacher to many students at Pleasant Hill School. We thank her for her dedication and years of service. I wish Terry much deserved time to play and read. I have a feeling that we will see Terry again as a substitute teacher when she finds the time. <laughs> Our next retiree will be recognized by Principal Kelly Mullen Martin. Kelly is the principal at Blue Point Primary School. <laughs> well, I just got choked up because we've both worked with a lot of those folks over the years. Um, but this moment is about you. So, <laughs> Patty Penley is, has almost 30 years of experience in education as she was a preschool teacher in Scarborough, all at Pied Piper, mm -hmm. all at Pied Piper School right here in Scarborough, um, before she came to work for us um, and has spent 19 years in Scarborough Public Schools. She has worked at all three of the K-2 buildings. She has worked as an ed tech. She has worked in academic support. She has been a kindergarten, first grade, and multi-age teacher. She is also one of the pioneer teachers of the All Day K program. I think the words she used were, I survived that transition, <laughs> uh, as it was a big transition. Um, and here she still is as a kindergarten teacher, most recently at Blue Point for 16 years as a kindergarten teacher. Patty, I consider, is a master teacher. She has an impeccable classroom. She is someone that cannot be flustered. She is warm and loving to all students. Um, and she can make anything work. She really can. Um, we talked today, and we talked about her accomplishments. And really, all of her accomplishments are about the accomplishments of her students. And what they accomplish is what she considers to be her accomplishments, um, which I think is really beautiful. Um, no one can tell a story like Patty. <laughs> and there are so many. Patty really needs to write a book. No one can act something out better than Patty. Um, we have uh, the kid, things that kids do and say in kindergarten, um, you can't make it up. And Patty, is the one to go to and she can make you laugh until you can't breathe. Um, and she does it with love and caring and that is something I'm going to miss about her more than anything else. Uh, but we're going to hand her over to spend time with her five grandchildren and her lovely husband who still works for Scarborough and is not allowed to retire as long as he's upright, as far as I was told today. Um, <laughs> so Bill, yeah, keep, keep it going. Um, and we hope to have her back to volunteer and hopefully to substitute in the future. Um, but we're going to miss her very, very much. Congratulations. <laughs>
It's also really hard to find her when you go into her classroom. <laughs> Let's in on the floor with the kids. <laughs> Our next retirees will be recognized by the Wentworth School Principal, Kelly Crosby. They're all really excited to come stand up here and chat about it the whole time. So um, I think it only makes sense to have our most veteran staff member come on up first. She also happens to be first alphabetically. <laughs> so Kathy Delcourt. She deserves two rounds of applause for sure. Mrs. Delcourt has been teaching in the Scarborough Public Schools for a remarkable 45 years. I don't know how to wrap up and truly honor 45 years in just a few minutes here, but I'm going to do my best. She graduated from the University of Maine at Portland in Gorham, and Mrs. Delcourt's um, colleagues share, I will always remember Kathy for her gentle voice used with her students every day even and particularly when she's correcting behavior. <laughs> you see, Mrs. Delcourt has a very special way of reminding kids about the importance of manners and of acting in a way that makes others want to be with them. It has been reported that Mrs. Delcourt's students share her pearls of wisdom <laughs> with families at home and that in her students' eyes, she is truly the expert on everything. <laughs> Mrs. Delcourt is a woman who chooses her words carefully, so when she speaks, people listen. She's well respected. Students and staff alike feel a sense of comfort in her steady presence. Kathy, enjoy your time to craft, rest, read, be with your family and your grandchildren. You will truly be missed. And she's a former student of mine. Yes, I am. And you are a wonderful gym teacher. <laughs> Good luck, Kathy. Ms. Griffin has been a school counselor at Wentworth for 12 years. She earned her undergraduate degree from Bates College, a master's degree from Wesleyan University, and a second master's degree in counseling from the University of Southern Maine. In addition to being a very helpful and supportive person at school, Ms. Griffin has a passion for dance and the arts and is a voracious reader with a true appreciation for imagery, mood, tone, and personality in books. It is clear that Ms. Griffin's heart is always with the kids and she is happiest when working with individuals, with small groups, or whole classes of students. Through her work supporting students one-on-one, -on -one, leading the K-Kids, a service group at Wentworth for many years, and her leadership in building and delivering developmental guidance lessons for all classes at Wentworth School through Pathways, her talents for mentoring and supporting others shines through. Mary, enjoy travel, the arts, and all things beautiful in your retirement. You will be missed. She loves worms. <laughs> well, if you sell worms, the K-Kids sell worms at the fishing derby. Next from Wentworth is Mrs. Barbara Merritt. <laughs> Ms.
Mrs. Merritt has been a school librarian in the Scarborough Public Schools for 18 years. She earned her undergraduate degree from the University of Maine at Orono and her Master's of Library and Information Science from the University of South Carolina. Mrs. Merritt's love of books is truly inspiring. She has spent time in four K-5 schools, always working one step ahead of us and anticipating the needs for new ways to engage students with books and with technology. She has never let technology intimidate her, and she's been a true champion of the learning commons at the New Wentworth School. Mrs. Merritt was directly involved in the research and the design of the space, and her vision has transformed a beautiful space into a thriving information sharing and learning environment. The busier the learning commons is with students, the more delighted you will find Mrs. Merritt. <laughs> Enjoy leaping into retirement with a big move to be closer to your grandchildren. You will be missed. She comes in early to walk the school, and she's put a lot of miles on those hallways. <laughs> um, next is Mr. Charlie Reichel. <laughs> Mr. Reichel has been teaching at Wentworth for 20 years. He completed his undergraduate degree at the University of Maine at Orono and later completed the extended teacher education program at the University of Southern Maine. Mr. Reichel was a commissioned officer in the United States Navy from 1980 to 1997, sailing Navy ships all over the world in support of U.S. foreign policy. Mr. Reichel has a great sense of humor <laughs> and a propensity to sing and hum throughout the school day. Patriotic songs for his class, old standards or show tunes for the rest of us. <laughs> Former students often return to visit because he gets to know his kids on a personal level and shows interest in their lives. Teachers also regularly visit Mr. Reichel because he's generous with a laugh, with instructional resources and ideas, and also very generous with the treats from the bowl of hidden candy in his classroom. <laughs> Thank you for your years of service and commitment, Mr. Reichel. Enjoy spending time with your family and your beloved grandchildren in retirement. You will be missed. Finally, the Wentworth Night Watch Guard, <laughs> Mrs. Deb Tuey. <laughs> Mrs. Tuey has been teaching in Scarborough for an impressive 31 years. She graduated from the University of Southern Maine, and Mrs. Tuey's colleagues share, no one will ever say you did not give this job your all, and then some. To go above and beyond is your motto. Mrs. Tuey is an avid reader and enjoys going to sporting events to root for the home team. Former students know to expect a phone call from Mrs. Tuey on the night before moving to a new school. And students often keep the notebooks they create with her well into high school and beyond. Mrs. Tuey shares her personal materials with other teachers and enjoys supporting those new to the profession. She has a small world connection to almost everyone she meets and her relationships with students have always been centered around kindness and caring. Thank you for your years of always wanting what is best for your students, Mrs. Tuey. Enjoy traveling and the opportunity to see your family and grandchildren at any time. You will be missed. <laughs> got his letter today. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Good luck to you. Thomas was one of my very favorites. <laughs> and she always thinks outside the box. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. You must have had her as a teacher. <laughs> Our next retiree will be recognized by middle school principal Diane Meadow. Mr. Libby, if you could join me. <laughs> so I'm happy to honor Dick Libby tonight. Um, I saw when the slide went up, I heard a lot of oohs from the audience. So Mr. Libby has dedicated the last 46 years of his life to the Scarborough school system. Since 1972, Mr. Libby has been a teacher. Um, he has taught every subject um, and coached softball for 16 years. He currently um, serves as one of our sixth grade math teachers. Um, Dick has taught thousands of students over his tenure here in the district. Um, I know we had some conversation today with some staff and um, the wonderment was, do you think that he's seen three generations? <laughs> um, I know I've seen two. <laughs> the math says that I could have seen three, but no one has stepped up and looked up at me and said, you had my Grammy. It's not that I haven't been expecting it, but uh, so far I've avoided it. So during his time in Scarborough, Dick has taught math, reading, writing, and science even writing an oceanography curriculum at one point. Uh, Dick also attended Scarborough schools, and so um, he is a true Scarborough historian. For all occasions, birthdays, anniversaries, babies, weddings, you can always count on Dick to bake a sweet dessert. In his retirement, Dick plans to spend time working around the house catching up on those little projects, continuing to bake, and hopefully returning to share some new recipes, and wow. as well as enjoying time with his growing family. Our next retiree will be recognized by David Creech, the high school principal. And Susan Ketch, <laughs> assistant <laughs> principal. <laughs> I just want to begin by thanking the board and the school district for honoring all of our retirees and congratulations to all of you. Wonderful accomplishment. And on behalf of the students and staff of Scarborough High School, I want to congratulate Penny Kimball on her years of service. Uh, Penny has a very close and personal friend and colleague in Susan Ketch. And so I've asked Susan to speak to the experiences she's had with Penny and honor her tonight. So Assistant Principal Susan Ketch. Good evening and congratulations to all of the retirees. Penny has taught English at Scarborough High School for 40 years and has taught two generations of students in some families. Penny has survived two renovations at Scarborough High, asbestos removal, time <laughs> teaching at what is now SMCC, 
double sessions at the Old Wentworth, a restructuring school project in 1990, co-teaching humanities um, with sophomore courses with Mark Galbraith, and at least three NEASC visits. Penny has been the advisor to National Honor Society for a number of years, and this district owes her a huge debt of gratitude for her support and guidance with both teachers and ed techs in grades K through 12 in her role as the certification chair for the district. I think probably everyone here can think of a time when Penny helped them out with certification. Penny always, always is kind and supportive and helpful to new teachers in our building. She's always been a safe guide and mentor when you're new and learning the ropes. She's also been equally kind and supportive with sophomores, getting them through that oft-challenging sophomore research paper. <laughs> she con Scarborough High School congratulates and honors Penny for her many, many contributions to the well-being of the school for many years. We hope you thoroughly enjoy your new role as a retiree, Penny. We know you'll be settling into your new home and working on many activities at your church. Congratulations and thank you to Penny Kimball. tonight of recognizing two very special people who are heading to two very different places. Um, first, I would like to honor Barbara Hathorne. Come on up, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara has been an educator for over 40 years. She began her career, much like she's ending it, in the primary school setting. Her first teaching assignment was a classroom teacher for second through fourth grade students, all in one classroom. <laughs> As she became more experienced, um, she got braver and transitioned to teaching grades four and six. Eventually, she went out on a limb and jumped into a middle school teaching position at Scarborough Middle School in 1999. Her first assignments at the middle school were teaching math, social studies, English, and reading under the guidance of an amazing principal and assistant principal, Joanne Sizemore, the principal? Yes, and, and Dick, Dick. Allison Marchese was the assistant principal. And Dick Libby was my primary teacher. Co-teaching with Dick Libby. As you all know, both Joanne and Allison moved on to leadership roles at the district level, leaving first the assistant principal position open, which Barbara filled for six years, and then the middle school principal position was vacated by Joanne, which Barbara filled for eight years. She leaves us this year as principal of Pleasant Hill and also slash improvement strategist, where the staff and students have loved having her there as their leader um, and a member of their team. It's with mixed emotions that we say goodbye to Barbara today. She has been an integral part of our leadership team, always, always wearing a smile and bringing a laugh to our meetings we wish her the very best as she starts the next chapter in her life. We'll miss you, Barb. Next, Thomas Vachon. <laughs> Thomas is one of the two student school board representatives and he'll be leaving us after today, his last meeting. Thank you, Thomas, for all of your service. Thomas was elected last year as a junior by his peers for the two-year position. Both in and out of school, Thomas has an amazing resume. He's been part of Jim Dandies, he's been very active and entertaining, uh, been a very active and entertaining member of Oak Hill Players with two recent standout performances in Crazy For You and Grease, which were amazing. In addition to this, this past year he wrote a play for the Maine Drama Festival one-act play competition, which was also performed at Scarborough High School. 
When he's not studying for any of his honor, for his many honors classes or AP classes, he has been co-captain on the debate team and a uh, multiple medal winner on the academic decathlon team. If you're coming to graduation, be prepared for the bling. Um, Thomas has many medals on his um, sash. It has truly been a pleasure to work beside Thomas and to watch him become an outstanding young man. We wish him all the best as he continues his education at the University of New Hampshire, where he'll be majoring in? Uh, classical culture in the ancient Mediterranean. Oh, and also Italian studies. <laughs> That's one major. <laughs> and we can't wait to see what the future holds for you, Thomas. You've really been um, a great asset to our conversations and always been bold and courageous in sharing your thoughts with us. So thank you so much. That's the rest of it. Thank you to all our retirees for all your years and years and years. <laughs> I think I'd have, I don't know, did we ever, did, we, did it get added up or? I have not, not calculated well, it completely. I can't even imagine how many years, but thank you so much for all your service to the district. We really appreciate everything you do for, for our students. And thank you, Thomas, for everything you've done for it. So um, on to, uh, let's see, on to 7.0 superintendent's report. We'll let you go in a few minutes, retirees, but I would love for you to stay um, just to watch the very next video that we're going to share. Today, um, this week has been a very fun and busy week. Uh, we have all kinds of celebrations happening for our high school seniors. We had an awards night, we had baccalaureate, we had the senior send off today, which is always an enjoyable, amazing experience and students um, from as young as kindergarten all the way up through eighth grade outside watching the seniors walk through and really giving them some all-star um, rock star treatment, I guess I would say. And so Eric Huntington, um, one of our teachers at the high school, quickly today pulled together a video for us, which we're going to share. Um, Dylan's going to click on it for us. <laughs> there were also some parents who joined us today, or joined us at the um, event this morning as well. Should I start from right here? Or? Yeah, start at the beginning. Start at the beginning, okay.
of luck in your future endeavors and hope that you will remember the good times that we shared with you this past year and the rest. Not only will we miss you, but the rest of Scarborough will as well. As you guys move on to the next chapter of your lives, we will all miss you. We have faith that all of you will do great things in the real world. Good luck. Silas Hall, Nancy Hughes, Jillian Cody, and Mary Elizabeth Meredith Lewis. Good morning, everyone. The sophomore class would like to first congratulate the seniors on their accomplishments throughout the last four years. We are proud of their hard work and dedication towards achieving excellence. It's been a privilege and honor working with them the last year. We wish you the best in future endeavors, whether it be from college or another path. And now, Tanya's going to be best.
want to thank the high school for coordinating all of the senior activities this week. Uh, we have another big day coming up with graduation on Sunday. It's uh, at 7 o'clock at the Cross Insurance Arena. And this, if, I, if my history is correct, this is the third year that we've done the senior send-off. And I believe it was actually started by our board chair, Mary, sending an email to then a former board member, Jody Shea, who um, quickly pulled it together, I think Joanne said, in like three weeks the first year that we did it, and it's been something that uh, I know all of us look forward to, and I know the teachers, too, look forward to seeing their students. And it was funny, one of the seniors was walking back with a sign that was said, like, Molly, you finally made it, <laughs> or something like that, so that the, little, the younger students had made. So thank you again to all the high school staff who um, pulled that together and make that happen, and all of the other principals who get your kids there, so we can honor our seniors. Um, the next thing is... We talked about graduation and then our enrollment. So um, our enrollment is down to 2,903 students this month, which if you looked at our enrollment typically, it tends to drop a little bit in June um, from year to year. Just a few weeks ago, we were at 2,916, so there's some movement going on. And as you heard, we got a new student on Monday at Blue Point, <laughs> or Eight Corners, rather. Um, two other things just for the board that you have um, in front of you. I've shared with you um, a project that we've been working on all year, which is our branding guidelines. And for the public at home, this is something that we'll be sharing on our website. Um, this year, we've been working to refine our mission and our vision, our values and our goals. Um, and thanks to a community member who reminded us, we just linked that all to the website. It wasn't there before, so that's there for you. And then also, we're, um, we've been working on solidifying our brand. And what we mean by that is really trying to create an identity and culture that K-12 um, is shared as the red storm. And so this has been a project that was led by Jordan Ferreira and Mike Legage from the athletic department. Um, and we took, you know, all of the various logos that were around in our district and um, tried to streamline them and make some uniformity so that as our students progress up through the grades, they really feel like they're a part of our whole community, um, the, Red, the Scarborough Red Storm community. So we're really excited to share this with the public, but wanted to give the board a sneak preview um, before we published it. And so that is a document you have there. And it also helps as um, if you've ever, you know, looked at one of our coaches or one of our teachers who's wearing some Red Storm swag, uh, chances are they could have been wearing multiple logos that looked a little different or um, slightly different, different types of S's and things like that. And we really wanted to um, just brand our our logo, and so that's what this work has done for us. Also working on um, some of our brand language so that when folks want to print things that represent the Scarborough Public Schools, it's a consistent representation. Um, so we look forward to your feedback on that, and then we'll be sharing it with the public soon. The other thing that you have um, printed for you is uh, was emailed the other night from our high school principal, the NEASC report. So. Um, all of that hard work that the high school's been putting in for over two, two years now, almost two years, um, is ready to be shared publicly. Uh, I received a copy earlier this week. It's also been shared with the Department of Ed Education and then the high school staff and the school board. It's been shared yesterday with the union leadership and then we plan to go fully public on Friday. So it'll be available on our website for all of our community members at home. Um, here and at home to view as well, and we'll be sharing it with media outlets. So a special thank you to the high school leadership team um, and the teachers for that work. That was a big job um, that we're not done yet. We'll find out later this month the status of our accreditation, um, but a lot has gone into getting the, um, the self-study done and then hosting the visiting team uh, to get to the point where you have the document that's before you. So thank you to everyone at the high school for that good work. And that concludes my superintendent's report. On the 8.0 chair's report. Um, I just want to start by acknowledging, you know, what an exciting time this is for our students and our staff. I know the senior activities, um, which um, Dr. Kuchenberger has mentioned, have been going all week for our soon-to-be graduates. Um, the honors assembly was Tuesday night, and there was, I think, close to or somewhere around $70,000 in scholarships given to our students, which is just incredible. Um, it's just so impressive that our community is so generous and so willing to support our students and, and we as a board are grateful. Uh, last night was baccalaureate, which is not a school-sponsored event, 
but again is another example of our community supporting our students and celebrating their accomplishments. It was a lovely ceremony and I commend all those who organized it and gave their time to make it special for our seniors. Uh, and the senior send off was today as um, Dr. Kuckenberger mentioned. And for me I just find it especially um, poignant because it, I, for me I think it helps our younger students to have a goal of looking forward to being seniors one day and they get to do that walk and so I, I feel like it gives them something to look forward to. So I, I really appreciate that we're able to do that for our, for our seniors and for our younger students. Um, and of course the graduation on Sunday at 7 at the Cross Insurance Arena and I just want to remind it is a ticketed event because um, I know maybe community members would like to attend but only those with tickets are able to attend. Um, and I appreciate all the hard work that goes into planning all the celebrations for our seniors. It is truly a monumental task and we appreciate our high school leadership and their dedication to our students. Um, another big celebration is eighth grade recognition ceremony tomorrow night, mm -hmm. and which is a wonderful event and we appreciate all the work that goes into planning that for our students because I know that they have the recognition ceremony and then a dance after and two of my three kids have, have done that and it's, it's I know, it's, it's, a big, it's a big night and, and it's, it's wonderful. So, um, and I'm just so grateful to our honorees that we've retired, uh, that we've honored tonight and very grateful for their years of service. It is hard to see them go, but we wish them the best in their future endeavors. And I know later on this evening we'll be having some teachers entering into a continuing contract, which is wonderful as well as we continue to grow as a district. Um, I also want to address some frustration that I've heard from some community members regarding the recall. Um, you know, we realize the election took place and I respect the will of the people who voted in the recent election. Together with my three remaining colleagues on the board, I'm committed to focusing on the future rather than the past and trying to work collaboratively with my fellow board members, our administration and our staff and our community to address all the important issues facing the Scarborough School Department. Unfortunately, there is no immediate action that will solve the issues we are facing. It will take time. I also want to share that the superintendent and assistant superintendent have a meeting with K-12 representation from the Scarborough Education Association, and I plan to join them at their next meeting, and I look forward to the chance to um, understand some of the challenges we face and to create our path moving forward. I want to listen and to understand how we can work together as a community. This has been a difficult year for our school department, but I'm optimistic that we'll be able to move forward in a positive manner. And the last thing I'd like to mention is the budget vote on June 12th, which I know Leanne is going to be speaking more about um, and I just hope our community will see the value in our small investments and also see that the cuts that were made in order to keep the increase smaller for, for our community. So. Just one point of clarification. Oh, I believe the scholarship award, the, the oh, amount yeah. of scholarships awarded was over $200,000. Oh, oh, $200, I think 200, one student alone received a scholarship oh, that's right, of that's right. Okay, so maybe I was thinking of this, okay. Yeah, yeah. so it was um, remarkable it to is. see how many awards and scholarships were given out. It's amazing. Uh, so on to 9.0 committee reports. Leanne, did you want to start with sure. finance? Um, thank you for everybody who has voted early. Um, and as Mary had mentioned, that we have an opportunity to pass a school budget on June 12th. This budget has already been trimmed by more than a million dollars before being presented for its first reading. Our leadership council drafted a budget that was prudent and thoughtful, all while maintaining level services for our students in the upcoming fiscal year. As we all know, we receive minimum funds from our state and must look to our town to ensure that all students have an opportunity for a quality education. This budget cycle is unusual, however. We are hearing that even our most ardent supporters may not be voting yes in the budget for reasons other than the final number that has been presented. For some, it is a personal choice not to endorse the Board of Education, our school leadership, our decisions about policies, the special elections, <coughs> or because you do not feel we listen to the voters. Whether it is reading your emails and instant messages, or talking to you in the aisles of Hannaford, dance recitals, or on the field as you watch our children play sports, we hear you, and your words are hitting home hard. But now I implore you, please remove the emotions from this vote and remember who the budget actually supports. Our teachers who are the most important resource we have in our schools, and our students who, who represent our future. Approving this budget does not equate to endorsing me as the finance chair, or endorsing the rest of the board, or even our leadership. 
What a yes vote will do is ensure that our district can maintain level services for another year. It will ensure that we do not have to cut deeper into programs before we can put forward another vote to our community. Please remember your vote for this budget is ultimately a vote for our teachers, our students, and the entire town of Scarborough. Thank you. Um, communications. Communications? Or, and did you, Leanne, did you have anything on the school business partnership? Oh, or if you, I, I don't know if you do, want to actually. do that as well. Um, I'd like to thank the three students, and I'm going to apologize if I say the names wrong, but Jamee, Jenny, and Natalie, thank you so much for letting me join in and see those final presentations. This internship program that they have gone through was incredible. Um, watching how poised, how engaged they were. For some, mm -hmm. it put them down a pathway of they know what they want to do with the rest of their lives. The relations they, relationships they've built within the business community is incredible. And I hope that other students take advantage of this opportunity when it's their turn as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Do you have anything for communications? Uh, I do, so um, I have a few things. Um, as most of you know that I am a one-person communication committee, I have been for the past several weeks. Um, I think tonight I will have a, another member being added. Um, and so after that we'll be scheduling, we'll be working to schedule our next meeting. Um, I, th I personally think that at the next meeting we'll need to talk um, more about how to address the recent votes um, by our community and our teachers. I think it will fall to communications to come up with ideas and strategies to present to the board to respond to those votes and the message that communication and cohesiveness need to be improved throughout our district and community. I personally, again, feel strongly that we need to move forward and continue to conduct the usual business of running the district, but I recognize that we may not be able to continue conducting the usual business in a business as usual manner. Um, as Mary mentioned, this process may be uncomfortably slow for some people, um, including members of the board, but these changes can't happen immediately. They require discussion and agreement of all the board members before they can be implemented. Um, so uh, once that next meeting has been scheduled, I will let everybody know. Um, we do have some things that have happened um, since the last meeting. We've uh, had a long collaboration um, to create an ad that's gonna be coming out in the leader tomorrow um, I have copies of it, so if you want to take them with you to your schools and houses and coffee shops, <laughs> um, wherever that may be, um, I have a bunch of copies here. I'll put them out when we're done. Um, it's a two-page ad, and I have a huge mea culpa on my part. I didn't realize, well, I didn't realize that we needed to have the, um, information on who paid for this ad in the leader. Um, so I'm saying publicly that the Scarborough School District paid for this ad. Um, it is not on there and that's my mistake. Um, so anyway, we're gonna be distributing these printed versions around and if anyone would like to help, we'd be um, grateful for that. Um, we're also gonna start um, daily budget posts and reminders on Facebook from um, starting to tomorrow morning until Tuesday, voting day. Um, and like I said, the next meeting will let you know. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna do policy really quick. We have a, for policy, we have a meeting scheduled for June 20th from 12 to one, you know, here in central office. So that's what's next for policy. Um, Jackie, negotiations? Yes, I will re be reporting on the conclusion of uh, the contract with cafeteria, cafeteria custodians a little later. Uh, we are continuing to negotiate with the new, with the administrative team. We've had to have that on the back burner because there's been so much going on of late that they've been involved with, we've been involved with. Uh, we haven't called it off. We've just had to delay. And uh, I, uh, I will be on the nominating committee for Maine School Boards Association and we will be meeting the first part of July. Alrighty, on to um, student 10.0 student representative reports. Should we start with Thomas or Dylan? Or? We'll start with Thomas. Okay. So, um, a lot of the events uh, uh, have already been talked about in the superintendent's report, but there are, there are still a lot of things going on at Scarborough High School. 
uh, this late in the game. Uh, most notably, I'd say, is the, Scar the high school yearbook has been released. Um, an important part of that ceremony earlier today with the seniors was um, the yearbook dedication. It was dedicated to uh, Mr. Coffin. And it's one of the most beautiful yearbooks I've seen um, in all of my years. And I got to give a lot of credit to uh, Jacob Lewis, who we've had here before. Uh, I know he's put a lot of effort into it because uh, he's in one of my classes and when we, whenever we had free time, he had been working on uh, pictures that would be in the yearbook. He'd been talking about thing, ideas he had for the yearbook, um, talking a lot about the yearbook. And I think that his contributions uh, really helped uh, with the overall design of the yearbook. And it, it's just really fantastic. Um, another thing is um, a, a Scarborough High School is doing something a little bit new on Saturday, th this Saturday. Um, some Scarborough students will be attending what's called the World Scholars Cup, which is similar, which is similar to uh, Academic Decathlon. It was founded by a person who was associated with Academic Decathlon. <laughs> And I believe nine high school students will be going down to Boston this Saturday uh, to compete in that. Uh, contestants who do well in that will receive stuffed alpacas. So <laughs> that's always that's always wonderful. <laughs> when you have stuffed alpacas as your uh, reward, um, as your reward, then I always find that as a plus, personally. Um, also, I'd like to go into, <laughs> I'd like to go into a little more detail with uh, baccalaureate. Um, so at baccalaureate, um, a few notable things that happened were uh, that all of the clubs and all of the sports teams uh, made contributions. They, they uh, placed gifts um, at the altar at St. Max. Um, Gifts like, I believe Model UN brought a glo globe. I know um, o uh, Oak Hill players brought a tap shoe. Uh, Jim Dandies, uh, I think most memorably, uh, Luke Grover juggled some three juggling balls uh, down the aisle, which w was great. Um, <laughs> and also, there, uh, they uh, had a slideshow in which all the graduates, they had a baby picture or a picture of the graduate when they were really young and, their, uh, and them as a senior, which, was, which got some uh, wonderful reactions. <laughs> Particularly Thomas's. Yeah. yeah, mine had a very loud reaction. <laughs> um, and uh, there was one other thing that I can't remember what it is right at this moment. Um, Wow, I, I can't believe I'm forgetting. You sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but other than that, uh, would you like to take it away? Sure. So <laughs> as of yesterday, I hadn't been aware that I had to have a report. So this I put together in like two days. So I might not have every event that's happened in the last week. Um, I did include some stuff that I may have not spoken about in my other report. <clears throat> but I'm going to start with the primaries today. So at the beginning of May, they had the PTA put together the Teacher Appreciation Week as they do each year. This year it was themed Hawaiian. Uh, so I included some photos of their Hawaiian theme and decorations. I thought it was really fun. Um, and then the PTA also had put together a few fundraisers this year. And this one included the different class of 2019, uh, 20, that's me, sorry, <laughs> class of 2028, 20, 29, 2030, um, which is, this is the first time they had ever done it, and I guess it was a huge success. <clears throat> Along with this, I don't have a photo of it, but they had a fundraiser over at uh, Romeo's, which was also a great success. Um, on Saturday, May 19th, they had their first ever bike safety rodeo. Um... <laughs> So the safety rodeo was in conjunction with Maine, with the bike Maine and the Scarborough Police Department. It was 
It included a skills course, helmet check, bike check, and other fun activities. I got that right off the flyer. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, they also, the PTA paid for a bunch of different enrichment programs for all three primary schools, including field trips, Chiwonky visits, I think I'm pronouncing that right, uh, mad science visits, and a kindness, kindness musician, and more. I believe this was the kindness musician. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, the second grade urban air event will be happening on Saturday is a new event that will bring all the second graders together from all three primaries right before they move up to third grade. So that'll be exciting. <laughs> um, and then they also have their annual Sea Dogs community game night. Um, I probably mixed that term up, but that'll be Saturday as well. On Tuesday, June 19th from three to seven, they'll be having their annual Sweet Frog fundraiser to celebrate the end of the school year. And then later this summer, they'll host an incoming kindergartner's popsicle social. Um, I hope to attend that, sounds like fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so following that, I'm gonna hop over to the middle school now. Um, so I was gonna put this on last time, but I had a lot on my last report, so I moved it to this one. I've been doing a lot of different tours around the schools, and one class specifically, I'd, I'd never done this. I might be the only person in the district who didn't know we had this, but the, Ms. Grafham was, teaches a tech class for the sixth grade, and they were coding these little devices. And this class specifically, they had to use this little device and code it to do different actions all at once. So their assignment was to get it to say words, blink, and make noise all at the same time. I never did that in sixth grade. I would never even imagine doing that. But I just thought this was the coolest thing. I wandered into the class and left with a thing to report out on. Um, <laughs> so I, thought, I just I felt like I had to include that. Um, this was really cool. So besides the fact that last month there were a bunch of sixth, seventh, and eighth grade band and chorus concerts, um, the eighth grade band participated in the Fun Town Music Festival. This event was created by the SMS band director 10 years ago, and this is the first year that the middle school has participated in it. It is anticipated that they will participate annually from now on, but it was, from what I've heard, it was really fun because after they performed, they got to disco and play at Funtown. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and then, let's see. All right, well, I will just talk from what I have. Um, the Scarborough Middle School students participated in the 15th annual MLTI Student Conference on Wellness Day, so 20 students had applied and uh, were accepted to attend this uh, event in Orono. Uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students were represented there, and what, it was, what I didn't know was that this event was actually created by Miss Biggs, the tech integrator over at the middle school. And this was the 15th annual event, so it's been happening for a while. Um, oh, I almost forgot. I'm gonna go back just a second. Um, oh, I guess I don't have a picture. Uh, the Wentworth PTA, I just have to give them a shout out. Uh, they organized a parent-sponsored lunch last Friday, June 1st, for teachers, staff member, teachers and staff members at Wentworth and the middle school, as well as the entire bus department, Scarborough Police Department, and Scarborough Fire Department. Uh, it was, I, and I quote, this is what I was told, it was a pretty cool and all organized, it was pretty cool and all organized in less than 24 hours. Basically the lunch was our way of saying thank you for how well they all handled the bomb threat the day before at the middle school. Uh, we were all so thankful to have our children surrounded by so many amazing people in our community that had to do something to show, oh, so we had to do something to show our gratitude. Not only did we keep, they kept, keep the kids safe, but they also kept them calm and happy. It was very impressive. And along with that, um, I just, like 20 minutes, not maybe not 20 minutes ago, but I just found this event um, that the K-Kids had done. They did a walkathon. Uh, so the K-Kids sponsored a walkathon during recess as a fundraiser for the Maine Children's Cancer Program. Um, and so that occurred on May 29th, 30th, and 31st. I don't know how much they raised, but 
I thought that was a cool way for the students to get events going on. Do you have the number? Or did an event occur? <laughs> Really? Um, we have a big reveal at our finalist simulation All right. June 20th. But we're pretty thrilled that we're covering two movies. Wow. Wow. Between 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 July. I might have to, yeah. Well, yes, yeah, so you'll find out the number eventually, but it did <laughs> sound quite successful. Uh, and I think that's all I have to say. Again, I just found out about this yesterday. Um, that's it. I'm just going to keep people tuned in. Yeah. Be excited to watch no. that next meeting to find out. <laughs> Stay tuned. That's a good, good system. Yes. Okay, 11.0 new business, uh, 11.1 .1 appointments. All right, so everybody's been waiting, for. waiting for. <laughs> Thank you so much for um, being here, and uh, we'll get to continuing contract in just a moment. Uh, but first, I would love to read the list of second year probationary teachers for your approval this evening. Um, and so I'll go ahead and do that, and then you can vote to approve. Zachary Barrett at the high school, Nancy Carroll at Eight Corners, Cassidy Aaron at the middle school. Jessica Chaples at Pleasant Hill, or Aaron Cassidy, sorry. Adam Corvo at Blue Point and Eight Corners. Chantelle Dion Michu at Wentworth School. Deidre Dupre at the high school. Ashley Fasulo at the middle school. Sarah Kent at the high school. Whitney Nathan at Wentworth. Melissa Shabo at the middle school. James Temple at the middle school. And Abigail Wilworth at the Wentworth School. All will be moving from first year probationary to second year probationary professionals. So the motion is to please approve the second year probationary professionals as presented. Uh, do I have a motion? Second. Oh. So moved. Do I have a second? No, second. second. I thought oh. you made it. Oh, well, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and any discussion? Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> uh, can we have a can I have a vote then? All in favor? Give me six. Oh no, I'm sorry, four and two. Mm. So on to eleven point one point two, third year probation professionals. Yes, so please approve the third year probation probationary professionals as presented. And I would also like to like, read the list. Lori Alves at the Wentworth School. Matthew Andr Andresen at the high school, Christine Beecher at the high school, Darlene Boisenal at Pleasant Hill, Jane Bolas, district-wide school psychologist, Anna Cosma at Wentworth School, Stephanie Davis at the high school, Sandra Dumont, high school, Ryan Facey, high school, Glenn Fernald, high school, Tobin Hagelin at the middle school, Emily Hopkins at the high school, Brandon Johnson at Wentworth, Maura LaFond, Middle School, Lindsay McDonald, Wentworth School, Laura McKenzie, Wentworth School, James Marshall, Wentworth, and Danielle Martell at Wentworth, Allison, Allison Murtha at the high school, Courtney Norod at the high school, Amy Robertson now at the middle school, Michelle Shoup, high school, Patrick Volker, Volker high school, Brooke Wasden, high school, and Garrett White at the middle school. Move approval is read. Second. Any discussion? Um, we have a vote. All those in favor? Four and two. Uh, 11.1.3, first year continuing contract professionals. So this is um, a big deal for our teachers and many of them are here tonight. What I would ask is if, as I call your name, um, please stand, and then I'm sure the board will want to shake your hand, so you'll have to come through the reception line, <laughs> as you saw the retiring colleagues do earlier. Um, before I read the names, I just want to explain for the public so they understand that these are teachers who have been with us for three years under a probationary status, and now they are entering into a continuing contract. And so it's a big moment in a teacher's career when this happens. You kind of take a deep breath. and. Um, 
keep working hard. That still happens. Um, but it really, we really do have an amazing list of folks that will be joining our um, hopefully forever team, and then we'll be seeing them in 46 years or so. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are here, just please stand, and then we'll do a handshakes at the end. Sarah Athern from Wentworth as our STEM teacher. Carrie Allen, uh, Carrie Allen Avery is at the middle school. She is a Gates math teacher. Carrie Becker at the high school, a language arts teacher. Aaron Card at Eight Corners, a music teacher. Uh, Will Cabana at the middle school is a social studies teacher. Sarah Conieris at Eight Corners is a classroom teacher. Elizabeth Fahan at the middle school teaches science. Erin Huth at Wentworth is a classroom teacher. Erica Kay, Kay, Kay. Kay at Pleasant Hill is a classroom teacher. Sorry for that. Melissa Maddock at Wentworth is a classroom teacher. Albert McCormick is at the high school as a science teacher. Gail Neal at the high school is a math teacher. Mary Beth Nolt at the high school teaches language arts. Amy Ranko at the high school is a social worker. Annie Reiner at the high school teaches language arts. Richard Salinger at Wentworth is a classroom teacher. Diane Stoltz at Wentworth is a special education consulting teacher. And Richard Wesley is at the high school. He's a language arts teacher. Move approval as read. Second. Discussion. Oh, almost. Are there any discussion? Oh, just congratulations. Welcome. <laughs> but, um, all those in favor? Two. Unanimous. Yes. Yes. At this time, come on up and shake the hand. hardworking teachers. If you would like to stay, you may. If you'd like to go, we'll give you a moment to do so. Thank you so much for being here, and congratulations again. School special education teacher, social life skills. Um, we have a. Yeah, so the next three appointments yep. are exciting to be bringing on some really, um, I've had the opportunity to meet with these folks and some really high quality special educators. Um, thanks to Allison's leadership and uh, hard work along with our other, with our principals and Chris Rohde as well. Um, so the first one is a Wentworth School special education teacher. Whitney, Whitney Nathan has been selected to fill this position created by a resignation. Ms. Nathan attended Skidmore College where she earned her Bachelor of Arts degree. Vanderbilt University where she earned her Master's of um, Education and Brandon University, Brandman University where she earned her Master's of Arts degree in Special Education. She's taught in California, Tennessee, and last year she filled a one-year position um, due to a leave of absence at the Wentworth School as a social life skills teacher. Ms. Nathan will be placed on step nine of the Masters Plus 30 scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Whitney Nathan as the Wentworth School principal, or no, not as the principal. Kelly. <laughs> 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 Let me do that again. <laughs> the recommendation is to appoint Whitney Nathan as the Wentworth School special education teacher for the social life skills program. <laughs> so moved. Second. 
Okay. Any discussion? Uh, ready for a vote? Um, all those in favor? Board. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that would have been a big surprise for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> 11.1.5, when for the school special education teacher functional, functional life skills appointment. Yes, Brianna Lynn Scott has been nominated to fill this new position at Wentworth School. Ms. Lynn Scott received her Bachelor's of Science degree from the University of Maine in Farmington and her Master's in Autism Spectrum Disorder from the Grand Canyon University. She has been a resource room teacher in Lewiston, Maine for two years and most recently was a RISE teacher also in Lewiston Public Schools. Ms. Lynn Scott will be placed on step six of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Brianna Lynn Scott as the Wentworth School Special Education Teacher in the Functional Life Skills Program. So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Four and two. Um, moving on to 11.1.6, uh, an appointment for a middle school special education teacher, academic life skills. Susan Teal has been chosen to fill this position created by a retirement. Ms. Teal obtained her undergraduate degree in education from the University of Massachusetts in Boston and is working towards completing her master's degree. Ms. Teal has over 12 years experience working and teaching students with special needs in area schools in Saco and Springvale, Maine. Ms. Teal will be placed on step 13 of the bachelor's plus 15 scale per the co collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Susan Teal as the middle school special education teacher for the academic life skills program. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, all those in favor? Four and two. Um, we're on to 11.1.7 Pleasant Hill school teacher appointment. Megan Haley has been selected to fill this position created by a retirement. Ms. Haley received her Bachelor of Science degree in early childhood education from the University of Maine Farmington. She has worked as both an educational technician, an educational technician three and substitute teacher in area schools for two years. Most recently, she has been a long-term substitute at Pleasant Hill in a first grade classroom since October 2017. Ms. Haley will be placed on step two of the bachelor scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Megan Haley as the first grade teacher at Pleasant Hill School as a first grade teacher. So move. Second. Second. Any discussion? The one thing I would add Oops. just before you oh, yeah. vote um, is just um, kudos to our administration for, you know, going through these interview processes in such an efficient way. They've really, all of these candidates are so impressive. Um, I look forward to being able to meet them or see them in the classroom. Really job well done by um, Allison and her team and Barb. Wonderful. Um, are we ready for vote then? Um, mm -hmm. All those in favor? Four and two. Thank you. May I ask how many openings do we, cont do we still have? Many. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We have, uh, you know, well into the double digits, probably 15, I think, at tech positions um, and several teaching positions and two administrative positions. Thank you. On to 11.1.8, school board committee assignments. Uh, due to the recall, we've had to, you know, reshuffle our committee assignments um, slightly. So um, we'll be having the committee Committees will only have two members just to be able to have enough members, but not to have, if we had three members, that would be a majority of the board and that would be make things more difficult. So we'll just have two members on each um, committee. On finance, uh, Leanne Caslonis will be chair and I will join her. Um, on negotiations, Jackie will be chair. And um, Leanne will join her, but I will be still joining her on the ad admin contract since that's already in progress. Uh, on communications, Hillary will remain chair and Jackie will join her in communications. In policy, I will be chair of policy and Hillary will remain in, in policy. Facilities, um, I'll be on the facilities. Uh, le legislation, Jackie will continue. Um, vocational schools, um, meetings, uh, Leanne will take that on. Um, the health and sa safety, uh, I will um, be joining that group. Business and school partners, Leanne will be um, continuing on. And um, teacher evaluation, Hillary will be continuing on. And the pre-K task force, Hillary will also be continuing on with those. Um, so those are the board committees um, through the elections in November. And uh, do we need to approve? I guess we need to approve. No, 
Yeah. No, we don't need to approve that. Okay, I wasn't sure of that. Okay, uh, on to 11.1.9, the meeting minutes of April 5th, 2018. Approve the minutes as printed. Second. Uh, any discussion or any changes? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's four and two. 11.1.10, there's a high school donation. Yes, so please accept this dona generous donation of $500 from Gregory Strzegowski. Um, Mr. Strzegowski is a father of a- Strzegowski. Strzegowski, thank you. Um, is a member of a high school student and um, he's made this donation as a symbol of appreciation for the hard work that the high school staff um, has done in helping his child um, experience success at the high school. He um, has uh, some work to continue to do, but he's very thankful for the support in getting him across the finish line and prepping him for graduation and um, the majority of his classes. And he wanted to do something really special to thank the staff. Um, and so I ask that you please accept this donation with great thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, move acceptance with thanks. Second. Any discussion? I, I just want to say thanks, Trunes. That's huge. Yep. Much my appreciated. I'm, I think I'm the only person who calls him Greg, but thank you, Greg. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a wonderful, wonderful gesture. Pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, all those in favor? Four and two. And 11.2, superintendent's so authorization of summer hires. So this is something that we do typically every June. The superintendent requests permission from the school board um, for the authorization to approve new hires over the summer months um, so that we don't lose high quality candidates in the midst of the longer gaps that we have and only having one meeting in June and one, me or, sorry, one meeting in July and one meeting in August. And I would ask that um, this be uh, something that the school board vote on at our next meeting, but I wanted to just create the opportunity to have a public discussion about it. If there's any questions that you might have about this process, I'm happy to answer them um, at this time. We've been doing this for years, and, and you, will, you will offer them a contract, but you will bring it to the board and say you have offered them a contract, and we will then approve that. Yes, the plan is to keep the same process in place. Right. Um, it really just ensures that we, they're able to know that we're intending to hire them. And it's specifically to teachers and ed techs and support staff. I would also like to add that if a person is taking a new position in a school district, they will not resign their old district mm -hmm. until they have a contract. So that's what holds uh, a lot of things up. So um, if a person doesn't have a contract, then we don't have someone signing on board with us, and they can have the possibility of taking a job someplace else who's going to give them a contract. I do have a, oh, sorry. I do have a question. One of the um, pieces that we had talked about with um, accepting assignments or you know, nominating folks for you know, coaching positions, teaching positions, was if we knew anything, if, if there was anything that we knew, if we had um, an understanding of who they were, and it's something that we would bring up, and it's really that final stamp. Would we still have that ability to say if there was an issue with a person, or is this a fait accompli that they're, they're hired, they have a contract, and there really is no board approval? So if, if I'm understanding the question correctly, um, what I think I hear you asking is that if they go through the entire interview process and we offer them a contract prior to it being board approved, mm -hmm. do we have any, um, if there's something that makes them unemployable, um, which could be a variety of things, I suppose, um, then that would be a separate matter. Um, typically, what happens in the interview process is that uh, the principal or the director would post the position and put together an interview team. Um, and then that interview team goes through the process and makes a recommendation to me as the superintendent and we have what we call internally a green sheet that gets filled out and it includes how many people applied, how many people were interviewed, who was on the committee, why is this the prime candidate. Um, it also, um, you know, 
there's other questions on there that allow us to like just manage the internal processes of, of generating a contract. Um, and then I interview that person. They're the final choice as well. And so my interview is very different than the interview that the committee would do. And then what normally happens is I sign the green sheet and I let them know that I'm bringing you forward to the board for approval. For example, the folks you um, approved tonight, some of them I met as soon as yesterday, but we knew that we were having that meeting, so we put them on the agenda when it was posted. The one area that would be different in that process would be when we hire principals. Those candidates will come, would be coming before you for um, final approval on that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions or comments? Okay, so um, do we need a motion to table that or? Yes. So is there, is there a motion to table that until the June 21st meeting? Table. To table this, um, to Why table this care? superintendent authorization of summer hires. That's what Julie had suggested, tabling it to the next. Or are we ready to? I think that the, the, I think the request was to table it until table. the next meeting. So okay. someone just needs to make a motion. Yeah, someone to needs to make a motion to table it. Motion to table until the next meeting. Second. Is there any discussion of the of that? All those in favor? Four and two. The next um, agenda item is eleven point three custodians and the food service contract. Jackie, would you like to yes. speak to that? Uh, I would like to thank the team led by Justin Stebbins, uh, who negotiated this contract for the food service specialist and the custodians. Uh, the school board heard us say that when we brought the contract to them in executive session that there were 64 communities in the state of Maine who responded to uh, request from, from the main school management about salaries for these people. 64 communities responded and Scarborough ranked 62nd. We were not happy. You may recall that in the last contract uh, we went to mediation and then we went to arbitration and quite frankly it did not bode well for our employees. We settled this contract in four meetings. And we did not have a lot of con things to contend. We changed the overtime, the wording in the overtime hours. We changed the retirement stipend. Uh, from 4,000 to 4,500 for people who have been here for 25 years continuous service. We agreed to flexible summer hours, but there are three schedules, so they will have to sign up for one of three schedules as opposed to being appointed. For example, they can work a, a four-day week still doing their 40 hours. We talked about the scheduling because scheduling of vacations, for example, if you have seniority in these unions, uh, you get to pick first. But we've also made it more fair in that, that some of the people with seniority would like to take Friday and Monday, but they'd like to take all Fridays and Mondays during the summer. And we agreed that that wasn't fair. So we've refined the language on that. We've redone the vacation. People who are hired, who are currently employed, have been grandfathered under the old uh, vacation uh, Time and new custodians uh, will have a sort of a reduced. They won't have as many vacation days. And for food service workers, we've uh, 
done essentially the same thing. And then for emergency cancellations, we've agreed that if people have already come to work and we close the schools, they're going to get their pay. And, and then we, uh, for, for their stipends, for their pay, they'll get 2% in the first year, 3% in the second year, and 4% in the third year of the contract. And that will, at the end of the three years, bring them close to the median of custodians and cafeteria workers in the immediate area. So we feel very good about this. They approved it unanimously. So I would ask the board to approve this so that we can sign this contract and it will go into effect July 1st for three years. And I would just like to commend Jackie all your hard work on this. I've worked with Jackie on this negotiations and I just commend you for your dedication and commitment. It's, it's wonderful working with you. Well, thank you very much, but we all worked hard. Yeah. I would make that in a form of a motion. So moved. Second. Questions? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to Jackie and Mary because they both were in negotiations and um, I, I haven't been here long, but it seems like it went super smoothly. So thank you to all of you. Oh, and Joanne. Are, do you, Joanne and Joanne, Joanne, Joanne. So Joanne, and then um, all the people on the other side too, to have this done in four meetings and to have it go so smoothly and to have um, so much positivity and, and um, everybody be happy with the end result is just, it really makes me feel good. So thank you all and thank you. Um, and I hope, I mean, I'm, I'm very pleased that we're going to be paying people more. Uh, what am I trying to say? No, not as much Barely. as we'd like. Thank you. Barely. But <laughs> they do good work for us. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. And thank you for looking out for them. Um, they deserve to be brought up to that scale. Thank you for fighting for them and making sure that they got fair compensation. Thank you. I, we feel that that's part of our responsibility to be fair with our employees. Thank really, you. Really Thank was, you for your support. Really was a wonderful experience, and you know, Justin did a wonderful job, and I think custodians and the they're very, very pleased. Were, 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 yeah. were, uh, great to work with. So, um, ready? Yep. Ready for a vote. Yep. All those in favor? Four and two. Thank you very much. Okay, and we're on to 12.0 adjournment. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, wait, wait. wait. Two things. Oh, One, I, I just want to alert people that the backpack program is, is, is gathering food for families for the summer. And they think, I think it has to be by the 15th. I don't, I think the 15th. I think it's the 15th of yeah. June. Right, yeah. and you, you could take them uh, to, to, the, to Wentworth. Uh, and they do accept cash donations as well. And the other thing is on the 15th, you missed this one, kiddo. On the 15th, <laughs> the second graders have their move up day oh. at Wentworth. Jack and I know this because day. I'm in Kiwanis and Kiwanis helps the second graders plant sunflowers starting at 9.30. If you would like to come and help those children, it is a hoot. <laughs> Every single second grader gets to plant a sunflower and they'll be in bloom when they come to school in the fall. That's the 15th? To Wentworth at 9.30, 9.30 to 11. Mm -hmm. Every single second grader goes through. I could tell you stories that you just mm -hmm. chuckle, honest to goodness. <laughs> And some of them don't even want to get their hands dirty, but we tell them they can wash their hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jackie, for letting us know. You're welcome. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Four and two. Thank you. Thomas is last vote. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, Thomas. Everyone laughs, so I don't have any <laughs> 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 <laughs>